probably going to have to shift to Bernie. And maybe a few more. But, you know, that's what they have those votes for in that little group of 13. It might be a 7 to 6 vote, not giving Bernie any more votes. It might be a 7 to 6 vote, giving Bernie another 20 to 40 votes. But I don't think it's the biggest deal, given the bigger stakes about the Democratic Convention and whether a, a coronation of a candidate that has questionable elections from the East Coast to the West Coast has much authority and is, in fact, the strongest candidate to bring to the presidency. So it's a big question. I have the uh, California report as of yesterday, uh, including those provisionals. Um, Hillary is still almost 400,000 votes ahead. What? Yes. I uh, that's what I thought. And it's 53.4% it's to 45.7%. That's more in theory what I've been hearing all along. Yeah. Well, that, that's that's the official number now. Whether provisionals are coming in, but they're yes. not. They're, that's still unofficial. That's the and screwy part. I have some information from this county in case you're curious. Oh, yeah. um, the original vote by mail, uh, without any precincts, uh, 36, almost 37 percent were burning. Then, with the first turn in of precincts, it was 48.7% Bernie. That went to 49.7 and then to 49.1. Um, and finally, the 100% of precincts was 47.8 Bernie. The late vote by mails on June 10, 37% of the new ballots that were counted went to Bernie. So it dropped, Ouch. and then uh, the June 17th count was 44% for Bernie. And so unlike what we were expecting with late vote by mails going to Bernie, it yeah. didn't didn't go that way, not at least not in this yeah. county. Well, she was good on vote by mail. So vote by mail was Hillary's strong suit in this election, so it's not a shocker, but it's a little disappointing. Yeah. I was just saying that I, I like what you're saying about election, you know, talking about election fraud and voter suppression, but another problem we have is the super delegate problem of um, Representative Huffman and others who have already cast their vote in support of Hillary before the popular vote has even come in. So that to me is our problem with our democracy, that they're determining the outcome before um, the people have even bothered. To vote. Well, I think she's brought up the question of the superdelegates and how they have swayed things so st strongly towards one candidate, Hillary in this case, before anybody else gets to vote on the convention floor. And I think, obviously, that's right, that's a big problem. And I think there is a counter argument for some superdelegates for no other reason than to just, you know, have a, a weighing process about whether or not. Uh, this candidate is in fact the right candidate. Uh, the Republicans could probably use a superdelegate right now to get rid of Donald Trump, which I think is one of the greatest disasters in 250 years. But that's my personal perspective. Uh, that, uh, I, I like the idea of a small corrective. I think the superdelegates, as constituted, are hideous, and I agree with you. There's, there's your number. Secretary of State. Now, uh, the Secretary of State is weighed in with uh, statewide results that are official, and then there's a difference, obviously, with the ones that haven't been received by the Secretary of State yet, and those are the unofficial. And I, I can't begin to solve the question of whether it's 8% or less at this point. We know it's moving steadily less, but the speed and rap rapidity, I, I think, is unclear, at least to me at this point. We have another question here. Are there sources showing Vu shredding documents in Ohio during Obama's campaign? Uh, well, he was not in Ohio after 2007. And I think the Obama campaign got rolling in 08, although he announced in 07. So I don't think we'll find that particular thing. But in terms of sources about him shredding documents, I yes, think Lori has some information. Yeah, they're, they're, he was definitely caught in the act, actually in Cuyahoga County. They entered the ROV office and there they were. 
and uh, and he was and his people were shredding them. Is that yes, the way the story and, went? And yeah. he he was there too, watching it. Yeah, yeah, supervising. <laughs> supervising, yeah. <laughs> He's got a bad track record. He left uh, uh, under an enormous cloud. It wasn't pretty what he did to the state of Ohio. So good news, we have 3,500 people that have been watching this stream on my, on my feed. So the word is getting out. And that's what matters the most is that everyone knows. So I'd like to answer this question. Can we as voters, what can we do to assure our right to demand trackable paper ballots? So in terms of trackable paper ballots, there are systems that have been developed. Um, Clint Curtis, who was a, um, uh, a programmer who was hired by um, a uh, uh, company to design a vote flipping mechanism and uh, one that could be hidden from view, and he was told that it was going to unflip what the Democrats would be flipping. That was the original invitation. Um, but when he didn't want, uh, when they, he was asked to make it so you couldn't see anything, he left the operation. And it was used in Colorado, by the way. Um, and uh, the, um, uh, the, the situation is, there are systems where, and there's some open source systems, where you can say who you voted for and then receive a number that's put into an over uh, open source um, file. And, and that's what Cl Clint Curtis did. And he had it within a small area. And then he went door to door after he lost to Tom Feeney, who was associated with uh, Bush, and and he had showed that he won, and then he went to the Florida Supreme Court, who <coughs> turned him down in terms of um, recognizing that he won the election, and he was invited to go to Congress to try to present his case, but was turned down. So what I'm saying is, is back then we're talking 2004. Yeah. But now we're t 2016, and um, wh and one of the systems that is being developed is a tracking system using open source, and then also also you get a very long number, you know, kind of like a FedEx package, well, which is sense. only for you. Okay. So the other thing is is um, and then you can see if if your vote was changed. Um, a, um, the, th the reason why we need to still, though, pay a lot of attention to preventative things and the addressing voter suppression is part of that, is that it's because the after, after the fact actions don't always, don't always, um, uh, have a good effect, you know, that you, you, you can, it's hard to argue. The horse is out of the barn. And I want to say one other thing that you don't know, perhaps, about California, which we uh, honored Carolyn Cernich, uh, a elected registrar of Humboldt County. In 2010, we gave her an award because she uh, worked with, um, she was a, a Kevin Collins, came up to her and said, he's a, he's a fisherman in Humboldt County. He came up, he said, how can we trust our ballots? How can we trust this election? And she um, had a friend, Mitch Trackenberg, who designed a system. And to, in Humboldt County, to this day, Carolyn Cernich has retired, but the next registrar, also an elected registrar, is very uh, equally gung ho about transparency. Um, they in Humboldt County they do not use Diebold or Dominion or ESNS. What they do is they take all the votes and they put it in high speed scanners, and using open source, and they can ca they count their votes in this way. This particular um, county was like 68 percent for Bernie. Um, but 
um, I've talked to Mitch recently and his system is still available and so we may try to promote that again and what Carolyn Cernich was using a a variation because to call a recount you're supposed to have a significant number of votes that look questionable uh, supposedly but to her even one vote that looks questionable is the call for doing this second running through of um, actually it's a it's they, they do use an electronic machine, but they run every through thing through again, and it's all added with open source. So, um, so I'm hoping that we'll bring some version of this back. Do we have more questions? Or? Uh, yeah, endless. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was waiting a long time. You want to? Yeah. 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 Um, I just, I just wanted to go back to the vote counting in California because we have such a small window of time here. Is, it, is there any way that you can get um, assistance from the state? Uh, can you ask uh, through your lawsuit uh, to request assistance in getting the rest of the votes counted? Or I, I just, it just seems like we're going to put it off beyond the convention and then we're it's kind of lost. Okay. Um, well, I'm not going to ask for assistance from the state because they've caused this problem. Uh, I'm going to ask for assistance from the judge, and your point is well taken. The judge can appoint a master. That's kind of the mechanics of it. The judge can appoint a master, and the master can make them do it. That's what it takes. That's the mechanics. Because uh, you've got a situation where the legislative is not doing the job. The executive is not doing the job. So hopefully the judicial branch will step in with its own muscle. But in terms of the count, we got two weeks. That's the end of the day. So the judge has extraordinary power. He can do a lot in San Diego. He won't have power to do it statewide. Uh, the only way to do it statewide is to embarrass these people. There's really no other way. If they're embarrassed and if they're fearful, there's going to be a f further investigation. The count may come out a lot better than we think. And that's why these days ahead, the next seven days are so important to be writing your local newspapers and uh, writing letters to the editor. Short, simple, not rhetoric and language that everybody can understand. That's the most effective type of letter. The next question is what happens if there is no certification in California? What happens next? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think this is a social crisis type situation you have historically when you have two aspects of society unable to budge. Uh, I'm confident that the legislative and the executive and the judicial branches will figure out a way about what happens next. The, the election's not going to come to a halt. The Democratic, primary, uh, the Democratic convention's not going to come to a halt. Historically, conventions take a vote based on what they see on the ground and what they think is fair. And that's what's going to happen. It's, uh, and it's not going to mean a lot, big loss of votes for Hillary or Bernie. It'll be a snapshot of what they think things are on the ground. Uh, so I, I don't worry about anything except people using the question of we don't know what's going to happen as an excuse to do nothing. Uh, you know, the people in Greece stood up and said, we want help. And everybody said, no, we're not going to help you. And we're going to step on you because we don't know what happens next if we don't step on you. I don't think that's the best way to do business. Another question is, is there a way to compel the Secretary of State to timely post real data in a format that allows people to see actual counts? Uh, my understanding, because I've been asking this question too, and my understanding is that, that they'll, sh they'll tell you what it is, but they won't let you see what it is. And if you have more information, please share it with me, because I keep getting this kabuki theater answer. I, I, that's my... Uh, sense of this as well and um, uh, the there is a group called the voters rights task force 
um, and Richard Tam, and that's a, a local group which I highly recommend um, in terms of being able to get this data. And uh, Tina, you're also a member of this group. Do you have any comment on this question? Or, or whoever else is here from that? Are you a member? So what about the Secretary of State posting? Uh, well, I don't have any information. No. We, could, we can do it with a court case. I mean, our court case could possibly compel data being brought forward. That's what discovery is for. Discovery is accelerated in these situations. Could happen in days. It really depends on what the judge wants now. It's kind of like we've served the dinner, and now he has to decide what plates he wants and what plates he doesn't want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've got so. another one here. If we win the election incompetence case, how will that affect the convention? I want to try to put this to rest because the question keeps getting put up in various different ways. Uh, it is my belief that it's not going to affect the convention at all, uh, except on a level of, oh my God, what happened in California and why is it so poorly run? And then hope, hopefully the bigger question about all over the country. That's the best way for it to affect the convention, if we win. Because if we win, we will have done something extraordinary by stopping the certification or in some similar method proving that this election was completely done wrong, for lack of a better word. Uh, so in, t in terms of actual delegates, you know, I think we're talking about a handful of delegates going from one category to the other. But the big one is, the very reason that Hillary fought so hard for California in the first place. She said, I don't even need California. Then why'd she fight so hard? Why so many provisionals done? Because she knew it was about perception as well as reality. I think the same is true here. Um, um, there's a question. Um, do you have any sample letters for what people, or suggestions for what people would say to the letters of the editor? Yeah, to I do. Here's a sample. It should be short. <laughs> uh -huh. It should be about what you, question. yeah, the question was, what's a good sample letter? And so I'm, I can't dictate it, but I can c kind of spell it out. It should be short, it, no more than 300 words, preferably 200 words. It should be about stuff you know about and are not doing it like on a secondhand basis. It should come from the heart. It should offer a solution so people don't feel hopeless. What is the solution? The solution for me is to, one, transform the electoral process in this country, and two, in the short term, uh, to support this lawsuit so that the, this investigation continues. Um, I have a, uh, another one uh, with respect to um, the Ohio lawsuit. It says, how many lawyers are working this case? In their case, it's uh, Cliff Arnebeck and Bob Fetrakis, okay? And then it says, in the Ohio RICO lawsuit, can the defense file for a motion just to delay the case? Yes, it can, it can fight it. It can, it can create delays. And this is where our alternative media becomes really important. Thank you. I can't emphasize it enough. Because if you have um, the defense filing to try to delay, for instance, to delay revealing exit poll data to delay being able to get to ballots in eight of these states, uh, or, or actually 11 of these states that showed big differences between exit polls and vote totals. Um, uh, the media that shows this up becomes a profound education for the American people, the alternative media, because there's still a lot of people who actually think that our elections are worthy of trust. And we first have to get a huge group of people aware that our elections can truly, truly, truly be, be hacked into and, and changed. Because without that large body of people, it's not going to happen. And, and I, as somebody who's worked in election integrity since 03 on up, it's one of the, for example, the least well-funded situations, um, uh, statisticians and election integrity people are working for free or, or uh, you know, on a total, total shoestring, and lawyers as well. 
And so, you know, we need to um, to rise up to create, become agents of change. Certainly, I want to say and acknowledge many people have made small donations to trustvote.org, and I want to thank you all out there, and that's going to go further the cause. And as we build this movement, um, you know, my take will be there'll be even more donations, and we can, uh, we even have a donation button for lawsuits and your costs and things. And, uh, and we can begin to step up to, uh, you know, Big Brother on a certain level. But we absolutely need the media. And I just want to repeat my little epithet that I do, which, which is so important that right now the way our country exists is if I'm a politician and I want you to vote for me I, and I want you actually to write me a big check, you know, the biggest that you can. I don't want you to think that your th vote is going to be thrown away and your, your election contribution, your money, your precious money is basically as good as toilet paper, okay? And if I'm a television station or a radio station, or a news page, or newspaper, and I'm expecting millions of dollars coming to me from uh, the Republican and Democratic parties as we try to create our election. I don't, I don't want to mention anything about election fraud because I'm not going to get those millions of dollars coming in. Okay, and if I am uh, the exit poll company, and I get handsomely rewarded by the media consortium of the AP and NBC, CBS, um, MSNBC, Fox News, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I don't, um, you know, I want to keep on my job. Er, you know, every other year I want to get lots of money pouring in from uh, the uh, the TV stations and the media consortium to me. So I edit my exit polls to fit the vote totals. And then, sadly, I have to bring up is if I am a registrar and I'm a career government official looking forward to my pension when I retire, I, I don't want anything looking like it's, anything's happened on my watch. And I, I uh, you know, I also have very nice dinners and or lunches with election company vendors and, and sometimes I get some extra things. and. You know, I really trust these people who come with their machines. And so, you know, I want to defend my choices, all right? And then periodically I want to say there is a registrar like Carolyn Cernich who, who made a choice to adopt the Trackenberg system at the suggestion of people in Humboldt County. And I want you to know for the eight years she served <coughs> as a registrar, she was voted the most popular uh, government official in Humboldt County mm -hmm. and uh, oh and people would stop her on the street and thank her so much for doing things and voter participation went way up in Humboldt County because people had a chance to trust their election and so my hope is to see this system begin to spread and uh, oh, or yeah with what so anyway, you I just want to bring that forward I think we still have it on there. Yeah, we have some of those articles back in this. Yeah, why don't you show a picture of her or something? In the, uh, what is the Mitch Drakenberg Tebs, you know, would okay. be. There it is. And we did a whole video on it. This is in 2012 or something. I don't know what that is. So if this, so what is this gets, this is trustvote.org. Trust trust um, oh, I'm sorry. This, that's this one. Yes, with this, and you were saying that we should write letters to editors, and I will write to Bernie Sanders. I'm encouraging everybody in the audience here to writing to Bernie Sanders. And what do I say to Bernie Sanders, you guys, because you just said something the main media is not going to cover this. And so just some key points, because... <coughs> Previously, when we did the Friday last week, it got out to millions of viewers. And what do I say to Bernie Sanders that the election was rigged? And the other thing that I'm wondering if we can have a little 
points of discussion. When I looked up Guccifer, the names and emails that was released by Guccifer too, and uh, you look it up, and some of the people who contributed a million dollars were the ones running the election software of the tabulators counting. And, oh my goodness, and who? Because they, and they're the ones to, not Seidel Dominion and the other voting company that's counting. SOE. And uh, also ESNS. Well, I, I don't want to get the names wrong. We should be clear on that because they are the military intelligence um, uh, software. That's uh, CIDL and SOE. Well, uh, one thing I just wanted to add is uh, I think there is a big distinction between gaming the system, which is what has happened in this country for 200 years, and a rigged election. I don't think anybody rigged the election for Hillary, okay? And I, I don't think it makes sense to have that discussion. I think the way to frame this discussion, if you want to win over people on all points of view, is to say that rather that the system was gamed. And there's a subtle difference, but the difference is real. But, uh, or that voter suppression occurred here, and then things led to th this result. But nobody rigged it for Hillary. There's no one person. And that's what rigged, in my mind, means. And we can quarrel amiably about, you know, I'm not trying to make an enormous point here. But I am trying to say no one person did this. This is a systemic problem. Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, I want to say that, um, that when you said, if we make this a partisan issue, we're going to lose, I can't say that enough. And uh, what we all want at least what I want. I'm not going to speak. For <laughs> I, w I want a country where people really, the, the outcome of the election is really what people voted for. Even if they disagree with me, I want this. And um, uh, on, a, on a personal level, I came from a very high level Republican family. And I had certain more progressive goals. And so the way that I came to harmony with my family was let's all have elections we can trust. Mm. And, uh, and I think when, if I talk to people of other persuasions, that's one place where we can all reach out together. And I've met people who really wanted uh, Ron Paul to win in 2008. And, uh, and Nader and earlier ones, and or particularly with Ron Paul, that there was messing around that occurred with his primary. And, um, you know, even though I don't happen to be a libertarian, um, you know, let's all come together on a voting system we can trust. The Greens and the Libertarians joined forces in Ohio in mm -hmm. 2004, and that's where the advances that did occur, occurred, partially because of people like Lori and Bob and Cliff who were in the fight, but it was this minor parties who didn't agree on anything in terms of economic policy, for example, that came together around voting because they knew how important it was. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're among the champions in this particular battle. Mm -hmm. And um, do you have any suggestions, uh, I would ask you, how we can begin to change the way that uh, observers are treated. Uh, do we need a lawsuit for it? Do we need a legislative effort? Do, what, do you, what do you think we do? Well, that's a good question. It ties right into the two questions posed to me. So let me address yours and then blend them in. Mm -hmm. The observer question is critical because the observers are the people who hold up our democracy in California more than almost any other factor. Uh, and lawsuits are traditionally one of the worst ways to create social change. Uh, and I'm saying that as a lawyer, a citizen, you know, and, and, and a dad. You, you don't want to just endlessly fight with people, you want to engage. And uh, sometimes a lawsuit does that, but usually it just scares people. Uh, so in terms of engagement, uh, Bernie's people in particular, that's who I love, right? And I'll tell you, the Bernie people, what they've done this month has been so magnificent. I, you, I wish you could put it in a bottle uh, because uh, it, it's changing uh, the, the way that I've lived my life, just watching these people in action. And uh, similarly, uh, the observers, if it takes a lawsuit, fine. Uh, we're, we're, we've waged a lawsuit, so we'll take that tack. But what it takes is people rising up. 
It's a civil rights movement, right? It's a voting rights act. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have muscle because people haven't used it. And the reason people haven't used it, we haven't had a really good contested election since 2004 on the presidential level. And we haven't had a really good candidate since Bobby Kennedy in 1968. That, that was able to make this kind of palpable difference in people's lives. We've had other good candidates, yes, but nobody like Bobby Kennedy. And a lot of his voters went right to George Wallace because they wanted that kind of passion, even though they didn't agree with what he had to say. And we're in a situation where people could and sometimes do go from Bernie Sanders to Donald Trump, which is the world's greatest nightmare, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, we can talk amiably about it after the show. Uh, but these are the kind of choices people make because they're angry, they're upset, and they see the world around them, they say it's not working right, and by God, this might work. And so my point is, in terms of, uh, of changing the way we vote in particular, we need good observers and we need good poll workers. And most importantly, uh, no, equally as importantly, excuse me, we need good people working inside these boards of elections. What I'm amazed by is how little leaking there's been. I thought there'd be more leaking. These are black boxes, folks. These are hermetically sealed with Democratic and Republican operatives who like things just the way they are, and they're not going to change. And they're not going to leak to Bernie people, and they're not going to leak to Trump people, they're not going to leak to anybody, because they like it the way it is. We've got some, we have statements, and I don't want to put too much weight on this yet, because I don't like talking about evidence much, but we have statements indicating there's been whiting out of Hillary votes, Bernie votes, and Trump votes. Okay, and uh, you know they've got their own reasons why. You know they like to fiddle with these, saying, "Oh, they won't go through the machine if you put it on the wrong ballot." And so we have a long stage of discovery chasing this stuff down. So I'm not making any ultimate statements here. Understand? But what I am saying is there's a lot of funny business going on with this count. And the reason we know is because people have been watching, you know, squinting their eyes and shoving their way towards the, the computer screen. It, and, uh, it, and frankly, if things go my way and Mr. Trump loses, uh, it's going to be very important to have people watching this vote very carefully. And if the Trump people care about it, they're going to have their people watching the vote carefully to make sure their person wins. But in either case, we have to treat each other with respect. We can't shout each other down when we're having poll worker meetings and trying to get the vote tilted our way. That's not the way to conduct a democracy. And the same is true with uh, we, we need frank and open statements from the people working there and the documents should be shared and people should be allowed to look over shoulders. It should be a family affair, no matter how violently we disagree about Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. That's the only way to get it done. The last question I was asked here was, what specific name lawsuits do we ask for support on? I can, uh, Hil Lori can address the ones in Ohio. Uh, there's two lawsuits, uh, both for citizens' oversight, uh, and they're both filed in San Diego. One's online now, the other one will be online on Tuesday. Uh, of course we need money. Money to lawsuits can go to trust vote. Uh, of course, we need information. Information can go to Election Justice USA. They're on the web. And uh, we need hard, strategic, analytical thinking. We don't need speculation right now. We need watching the facts and not going beyond the facts. That's what we need. Um, there's a, uh, one question here. Uh, um, uh, do you know who is responsible for election manipulation? Well, that's partly answered. I I want to say one thing that I'm very uncomfortable about is that two of the major uh, companies that count our votes are in other countries. And it brings up additional suspicion. And uh, uh, one of them is a company called CIDL, which purchased SOE uh, and CIDL is located in Barcelona, and we showed the nature of the uh, the board of directors in a previous presentation. I can certainly answer more questions if someone comes up to me at the end of this. And uh, um, Dominion is its capital. It's headquartered in Canada. So 
so um, tabulators are where you can make real, really big changes. And, and then, as I mentioned to you before, other countries routinely try to hack into our elections. And actually, some of what Hillary did crea created a way for still more people to get into our system. You know, with with uh, taking not using a private server, and so um, uh, you know, we really need to be on it in terms of uh, looking at things. And I I actually am in favor of registering your vote with an open source system and getting a number. And let's see where we can go with that. And we're going to discuss that and other systems um, in July. That's a really important conversation because when you can't trust the integrity of the machines, and every expert that I have any confidence in says you can't trust these machines, and when Western European countries say we don't want these machines in our country, that's really all you need to know. I mean, I, I love it when Lori gets in the weeds because I'm a bit of a geek, but we don't need to go geek here. We don't need, everybody in the country doesn't need to know how these machines work. They need to know they're no good. And they can't be trusted. And that's really the there, most important conversation. There have been other strategies that have done that have worked and worked very fast, believe it or not. Precinct-based hand counting. That's um, my favorite. As actually done, in, and it was, someone wrote a whole book about it. I forget her name right now. She's over in the East Coast. But, uh, New, Hampshire, New Hampshire does it. The whole yeah, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Although they did bring in electronic voting machines in 08, and that's where Hillary got the electronic vote and Obama got the hand vote. But um, the, there, it is possible, and they timed it, how long does it take to get a number of people counting votes in a precinct? It's not that long. And, and considering we had so many machines that are old and break down, and the other thing is, is when we, we try to get new machines, they're very costly. And Padilla has also created it so that they don't... Uh, Deborah Bowen was really de a dedicated Secretary of State who was really committed to election integrity. And in fact, she ran on that platform, her ads. Uh, in, and, and I was involved with that campaign. Oh, oh, can, I, can I interject at this moment just for about the Secretary of State when I get a chance? I yeah, let, let, me say, let me say, let me say, and uh, and uh, Padilla has uh, basically done away with statewide certification, and he is the ultimate decider, and that makes me very uncomfortable. I didn't mean to interrupt. I got so yeah. excited. We were talking about the Secretary of State because there's something I wanted to say uh, on live stream. If anybody in the state can point me towards a Deborah Bowen uh, fellow worker, fellow employee, during her tenure. We need her testimony or his testimony by Tuesday. And the reason why is because they have no experts. We were stunned. We thought they'd have some big geek, you know, female or male, telling us that we're wrong and we're stupid and here's the reasons why. They had eight registrars who were political appointees, you know, don't know any more than the rest of us. And then they had somebody from the Secretary of State's office who made a lot of these mistakes that led us here in the first place. Uh, and what I want to counter that person is somebody from the Secretary of State's office with Deborah Bowen. I hate most politicians. Deborah Bowen's one of the greatest politicians we've ever had in this state. Mm -hmm. We were very, very lucky. We wouldn't be here today because the manual tally statute wouldn't have been improved the way that it was under her tenure. Mm -hmm. Right, and she ran out of money with uh, Hardinger Civic, so that's the one that didn't get uh, tested. And Orange County is primarily Hardinger Civic uh, and electronic voting machines. And also, uh, the Romney family owns a major stake in that company. But aside from that, I, um, I wanted to say we may have to put together something known as the Secretary of State's Project. Yeah, which was funded originally by Soros, and and they got Mike Ritchie in there uh, as uh, I think it's Rich, yeah Mark Ritchie in Minnesota, 
and Deborah Bowen over here. And without Mark Ritchie, Al Franken would never have won. And just to show you why I, I my little my little game, you know, about that I was telling you about politicians. I went to Al Franken to warn him when he was campaigning in a private fundraiser. I went up to speak to him. I said, "You are in danger. These run machines are run by Diebold." Okay, and he was like this, you know, because he's into raising money and votes, you know, and so this is why we have to change the things. And what I would really love to see is, I'd love us to think of uh, campaigns buying election insurance. I mean, if we can ever do that, where that goes to a firm, uh, whatever kinds of observers or special software we need. To, uh, to buy insurance. I mean, campaigns spend tremendous amounts of money on advertising, and I don't think it's it's a something that is an impossible dream. So I want to bring that forward. Oh, we had another question here real quick about should we start making public records requests for central tabulator audit logs, or mm. will that interfere with what TrustVote is doing? I, I think that's a great question. No, trust yeah. code wants that. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. time. I like it. Yeah. Uh, my, my only request, and you guys can amiably argue with me on this, is could we wait until after the 15th? Yeah. <laughs> I thought this was for the next election. Yeah, I, I think getting up for November. Those, those take this time. Is a good one. Yeah. They so take time. If, uh, you know, and when I was with Beverly Harris in 2004, we knew the election was going to be stolen ahead of time. And all she was doing was making out um, uh, election uh, freedom of information. information requests on the night before uh, the election. I do want to say that Diebold, now called Dominion, has also created an unfortunate other system, which is a vote can be represented as a fraction of a vote, rather than a whole vote. So I don't know. Where this, it makes it easier to lose count. When this you're negative ingenuity of shows up, mm -hmm. but um, and Greg Pallast is also another good person to uh, be be uh, um, connected with. So I want to mention just here one last question: or how do we unite and unify all the movements? Movements moving together instead of all these separate groups doing stellar work in their own little groups. Well, I do want to let you know that I've been involved with a uh, it's so many different election groups, and I want to mention number one, I'll uh, mention Greg Pallast. Number two, the Free Press um, with. Uh Thousands of people have uh, offered to run for office. The Bernie uh, political revolution is going to continue, it's quite clear. And I like to joke and say, you know, if Bernie wins this year, he's going to have a pretty hostile Congress of Democrats and Republicans alike. He needs like minded people in there to get it done. You know, I mean, it's important to work outside the system and in. And with that said, Bernie needs people with his progressive vision. It's as simple as that. And he's coming to uh, to um, support uh, Sanchez here. He's coming to California mm -hmm. shortly. And um, uh, what's her first name? Loretta. Loretta Sanchez. So that's an example where you can uh, support her and. Tulsi Gabbard in Hawaii, and you know there are various people that, uh, and I, I don't remember all the names right now. Um, I also put up uh, black box voting earlier, and uh, I just uh, wanted to mention that uh, I will put on trustvote.org a list of organizations, you know, because there are many different um, ways you can address it. The other thing I just wanted to say is. Uh, when I was in New York, um, and uh, when I met with Democracy for America, who was a campaign, uh, you know, I tried to interest them in, in election integrity, and most campaigns pay no real attention to it. So my hope is that we're going to do this. There are things that can be done ahead of time if someone's part of a campaign. They can, um, like for instance, look into the number of voting machines in each precinct and make sure that they're enough for the people that are voting because both in Arizona and Wisconsin, uh, in Ohio and different places, 
they made the lines really long and there's a study that's done of lines that the, uh, that the number of hours that you have, the number of dropouts of the young, the people who have to work two jobs, the disabled, the old drop out, and, and the stuff that happened in Puerto Rico is also a problem. So, you know, I'd, I'd like to say to those of you who want to get involved in a campaign, prepare ahead of time. Uh -huh. for safety and reduced voter suppression in your area, wherever you are. So we are now running a bit over, and uh, I think we need to go soon. And uh, Is that all right? Oh, yeah. I think, do you have I another think important done, question? No, I think we've done. Oh, OK. Work. You have a question. question. Yes. Um, if the worst. Oh, here. Go there. <clears throat> um. Here. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. I feel kind of terrible about this because I am Bernie Point to a point towards it, Mike. Okay. I am Bernie or bust. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm really upset about the way this election's going and the votes, et cetera. And um, I'm just wondering if, you know, if something happens and Hillary gets a nomination and none of our dreams come true about Bernie getting it, um, Sorry to cry about this, but you know, it's so emotional. Um, a lot of people are crying. Yeah, I, I love Bernie Sanders. And he reflects, you know, my values and so many thousands and thousands of other values. And Summer, you have really you have really helped cheer me through this whole thing, looking seeing you on the website and you know, I met you a long time ago. I don't know if you remember, but anyway, thank you for all the help that you've given. But my question is, if, let's say Bernie doesn't get the nomination, and then he decides to, because of all the stuff that's gone down, could, I mean, if he ran as an independent, I know he said he wasn't, but then all this crap has happened, right? And this horror has happened. Rejecting so, the platform, too. Has that, yeah, has exactly. So if... He just changes his mind. He runs as an independent. How is that going to look on the ballot? Or if it doesn't get on the ballot, people say, oh, career, we're going to write his name in. Will that even be counted if he writes his name in? Or is it too late for him to join the Green Party? There's so many you know, options. And of course, we don't know what Bernie's you know, in his heart at this time. He'll let us know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, That's thank you. I, yeah. yeah. I just wondered legally on sure. those ballots since yeah, we have point. another election. That's we have right. a November one. That's and right. how is that going to go through and be counted and yada yada? Thank you all for being here. <laughs> we all Thank feel you. your pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, because I love Bernie Sanders, you know, with all my heart. There's going to be a march around Lake Merritt on Oakland if anybody wants to go. I just went to the march in Los Angeles. I'm still Bernie. That was great, and we're going to have more and more marches. Wow. For a guy, yeah. yeah. And, of oh. course, the one on July 24th when people are in Philly. So. Okay. And, and everyone <laughs> go to Philadelphia. <laughs> Bernie has actually called for everyone to go to Philadelphia. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Like, he so made the number. We want millions of people there. There's millions of people. Yeah, Keep Bernie it. wants us to go to Philadelphia. Okay. I mean, there were millions of people in, okay, in France that all. showed up to, you know, defend their country. It's time that we all came and family outing, you know, vacation. It's <laughs> July. It's the summer. Yeah. So and now let's go. Yeah. I just wanted to add that in terms of the political revolution that Bernie's ignited, uh, it's uh, I, I've known this guy as a politician for like 30, 40 years, and I knew he could do well. Uh, I knew that he was going to inspire young people and people all over, but I never ex expected it to be like this. And people like you, I mean, and you, you and you, and you, and you, I just have so much faith in what we've done. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was worried that Bernie was going to win, and of course I wanted him to win. But the worry is that how could you work with this Congress that's totally dysfunctional? And what I think Bernie is offering us is he's offering a path where we can move towards working together in a functional way, uh, in a way that we haven't seen in this country, I, I don't think ever. Yes. Yeah. So with that, we really should complete, because we're about 25 
minutes overdue. And first of all, I, I want to thank you, Bill, so thank much you. for being here. And uh, thank you, guys. Dan Grayson, Naomi here, thank you. Hey, thanks everybody on YouTube. We, that really went well. And again, I want to apologize for the um, Thursday night uh, presentation, which I did a few times on YouTube. We just didn't have the equipment ready. We hadn't come there early enough. It was unfamiliar territory for us. So now we're on home territory, home turf here at the Sunrise Center at the Institute, and I hope we get to do this more often. Yes, great. And thank you, Lori, for putting this all together and making this happen. It's right. important yeah. stuff you're doing here. You're all doing. Thank you. Yeah. All right, and thank you all up here for being yeah. with all your interest. Yeah.